Hello, everyone. I am with DJ Matt Hart, who is releasing a new record on the 15th called Below the Terra Part 1. Um, so, Matt, your, how would you describe your genre? It's um, From what I gather, it's metal, electronic metal based with some industrial and gothic elements. But um, it's, it's an amalgam, which is normally, I think it's common in, in our scene. In the, the dark electro scene was always just like a, a nice like a combination of different genres but how would you describe your music to the audience uh, you know I, i'd probably describe it as um bottom line industrial um it's um but it has so many different elements from other other genres it's it's very very electronic you know there's there's crossover into electronic body music there's crossover into kind of uh, what we call industrial bass or dark synth, or I mean, there's even part of my last record had had kind of a synth wave sound to one of the tracks. You know, it's electronic, it's heavy. Um, there are guitars in parts of it. I have um, turned down the guitars a little bit for this record. I felt like my last record, Terra 3808, um, was very heavy. It was metal industrial. You hear that from some of the tracks that um, that are coming up, but. Um, uh, going forward, I think I, I kind of I turn them down a little bit, so we're kind of going a more electronic genre. I certainly have taken influence um, from the last couple of years of um, of DJing on Twitch um, mm -hmm. and playing playing a lot of dance floor music. Not being able to get onto a dance floor, but playing a lot of dance floor music. So that kind of like four to the floor sound, I think, has kind of mm -hmm. come through in a lot of what I've been writing, um, and that's kind of. I, I guess that's kind of the sound that I'm, I'm going for right now. Something that is palatable. It's not too, too heavy, but it, it's still listenable and catchy, hopefully. <laughs> You're like one of the happiest DJs in the scene. <laughs> like, <laughs> your, your Twitch. By the way, guys, like you should sign up to his Twitch because he is such a fabulous, fabulous, fun DJ. Um, but you're you're so happy. Like whenever I watch you, it makes me happy. Because <laughs> it's so lively. Like you're playing like all dark, like heavy music, but then you're like happy, <laughs> like doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's like when we first met, we met through the Communion After Dark um festival last year. And I think you played, yeah. think you played before me. And then, um, but your set was like so lively, so vibrant. I mean, you created this nice juxtaposition of like that heavy, like super grindy EBM industrial type of sound with some electronic metal. But then there's a like, but the way you present, like it's so light, you know, it's so mm -hmm. um, delightful. And it's so like, you know, you just really want to, you know, get in there and then yeah party with you you know yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. like a nice party <laughs> element you know to what you do and i just i thought which made you such a standout dj for sure <laughs> um and uh so talking about the um so the new record mm -hmm. so it has a um from what i've got it has like a like a post-apocalyptic like you know type of vibe or, or story is it is it um is there like a whole narrative that you're doing um for below the terror part one and i'm assuming uh, there's a part two <laughs> <laughs> well you, we assume i i don't know yet to be honest <laughs> um, sounds cool though I, I get... <laughs> sorry it sounds cool though below the terror yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah so we've got we've got to start with a part one we've got to start somewhere um mm -hmm. but no the, the concept actually came from um like way way back way way back probably five years ago when i started writing um started writing music for um for release i suppose i i for 10 15 years i've written music for myself and just like mm -hmm. tinkered around um played around with music recording guitars playing keyboards um programming drums and and kind of figuring out where my vocals sit within that um but it wasn't until about five years ago 2017 that i finally kind of um got to it and actually started releasing my own music so i'd actually released in january 2017 i released a, um a, an album called anthology of corrosion it was i'd kind of gone back over the last six um the six months prior to that release i'd kind of gone back and gone okay i'm just going to put all this music out i'm going to kind of re not uh, not remix it but um uh, process it better remix it in my own way um, and and put it out and that's kind of that was my I'm going to do that and then it's gone 
so I've kind of cleared my brain, cleared my mind of of all the old or all, all the kind of old music that I had written. And and mm-hmm. you know, you go you listen to that album and there's there's nothing that really sounds the same. There's maybe two or three tracks that have a kind of similarity to them, but mm-hmm. I, I was just all over the place. Um to be honest, I still am. Um <laughs> but <laughs> but I, who, I kind who of really just, has it together, right? Oh yeah, That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is like, you know, just, yeah, yeah. Being fluid, you know, it, like you know, with yeah. the creativity and like you know, not being boxed in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and and I think that's that's something that I kind of uh, I grasped a hold of, like um, probably three or four records in, I suppose. So so I got I released all this album, and then I started writing. Like this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I wrote a five track EP called Chaos Rising. And the idea of um, the world was. You know, chaos was rising in the world at the time um and you know i i wanted to kind of align it with my vision of a of a future I, I had no point in 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 mind no point in time exactly um but but the kind of um the destruction of the world this very kind of sci-fi future apocalypse um kind of world uh, and that's kind of where i went i i wrote chaos rising and this is where the part one comes in i wrote chaos rising um just as a standalone five track ep didn't know where i was going to go after that and ended up writing chaos rising part two and part three um so that kind of like uh, those first 15 tracks were like this is this is what i've done this is a concept um flow um i'm not i'm not great lyrically um i i kind of tend to put my soul into the music more um and and that's in the back of my mind i know what the story is but i may not show it through the lyrics the lyrics are there and they kind of give a bit of a snippet to what's going on um, your I, lyrics I actually i mean from what i've heard of like you know your previous um records and also what we're about to hear tonight it's, mm-hmm. it has a very stylistic um like you know you're saying that you're saying that you're you're you don't feel like you're great with lyrics but then you mm-hmm. actually it feels like you have a very particular style with lyricism that actually works and actually works also graphically with mm-hmm. your music videos. It definitely has that like harder, um, yeah, almost like mechanical edge to it, you know, that actually works definitely with the mechanical. music. Mechanical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. I, 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 no, totally, totally, totally. That's what this conversation is all about. Um, but I can carry on. Um, so then we, we left carry the on. chaos, the chaos rising three, um, uh, EP. Uh, and then I was like, right, I've done three, five track EPs. Um, 2018, 2019, I started writing an album. Um, I kind of didn't know where I was going, how many tracks I'd have and what it would be, but it ended up being a 12 track album, Terra 3808. Um, I, I kind of, I quite often get asked the question, where did 3808 come from? And, and, um, it's a point in time now for, for, you know, chaos rose to 3808. And that's where, um, where my future concept is, is set. Um, 3808 is a year, right? 38, 3808 is a year. year. Um, but it's been an inherent part of your branding because I, I, I keep seeing 3808, like, you know, Mm -hmm. whenever, um it also goes with your with your twitch and your community or mm-hmm. at least the fan base within yeah. you know, in your world yeah. there it's there's always 3808 attached to the names of everyone yeah. that you work with <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is like it's really cool oh definitely um and and you're exactly you're you're entirely right um 3808 actually came from instagram um <laughs> when when i signed up to instagram it gave me a random number um, and that number was the 3808. And I thought, you know, I loved, I loved just the sound of that, those four, four numbers, 3808. It just had a, a good kind of rhyme, a good kind of, um, punch to it. It wasn't too blah, 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 blah. It was just 3808. Um, Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I I kind of uh, decided to set my future to 3808. Um, and, and yes, absolutely. I, I've kind of followed that through with, uh, with the Twitch name, Matt Hart 3808. Um, and, and the fact that, um, the whole of Terra 3808, the record is set, is set in that year, but Mm -hmm. I've even evolved the concept of what I do on my Twitch show on Monday nights, um, to, to be that I, I am a, I am a person in the future 
who is transmitting back to my community in 2020, 21, 2021 and 2022, <laughs> as it's been the last two years. Um, but I, That's so cool. yeah, I, <laughs> where this, where this idea came from, but I am still streaming. So my, my job in the future, you know, everyone has their role. Um, even though we are, we as humanity is, is a very small, um, small com community now. Um, but uh, my my role in 3808 is is the entertainer here i i do um entertain our um our soldiers our troops or whatever in in 3808 but i also send the transmission back um through through the time waves um back to back to the current present reality um and um whether it's kind of like i run a radio show but i do it every night in 3808 i, mm -hmm. I don't think i've I haven't run um 300 uh, I haven't run uh 365 shows yet so I don't know what happens when I get to 365 shows because if I'm running the show every night um but I do have a few years to play with it at the moment so I'm okay with yeah. that um so if I'm running the show every night in 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 3808 I'm running it every week in um in present day so mm -hmm. um you know we we are coming up to nearly 100 100 shows or something i think so oh wow oh yeah. wow, that's, that's that's amazing it's all like it's just totally live crazy. like like super like live stream like zip go like yeah not not like as an app so that everything's pre-recorded mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um all right well let's take a look at one of the um the tracks or music sure. videos that you've put together um it's called deep mind formulates and uh, let's take a look at that and then let's talk about it. Sure. Okay.
that was that was really really cool um i love so wait do you do you do the drum programming or do you record the drums i i program the drums yeah it's all it's like, just I mini always, triggers i always appreciate hearing double kicks <laughs> 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 on electronic music you know it's yeah. i think it yeah you don't hear it often you know and uh and then um the rest like you do the rest are do you just mostly use vsts or do you actually um are some of those actually recorded uh well it's it's all software synthesizers I, that that was quite a long time ago and i guess when i wrote that and uh I was probably using the likes of massive synthesizer to write to write the synth stuff, and then mm. uh, I used battery as a as a, um, oh. as a sampler to do the tri to yeah. do the drums. Um, mm -hmm. uh, samples I I just try and find anything that I really like and put it in. Um, I, I was. Um, I am a big fan of Fear Factory, which is where that double kick kind of sound comes from. Mm -hmm. I think certainly mm -hmm. highly influenced on that on that track and some of the other tracks on the record. Um, uh, and then I use uh, I use a vocoder from its native instruments again. Um, no, can't remember what it is, but yeah, it, yeah, you know, no, but <laughs> it's always just, I always just like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. to know like how production goes, like you know, um, yeah, like, every artist is different, and um, every yeah, everyone like has a method, and like you know, they mm -hmm. have their favorite plugins and VSTs, you know, it's yeah, really cool. And, the, and all the, all the guitars are recorded, so the guitars are live. I record those in, um, try and line them up as best as I can. I'm not the greatest guitarist player, guitar player, but. Um, uh, I can kind of get away with a few like simple riffs here and there, so it tends yeah, to work out. Yeah, I so. I love I love guitars. I mean, I love I love drums. I love guitars, and um, like you know, I I'm not best guitar player either. I could I could I I could really I could write and I could record and track, but having me perform my guitars mm. live, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. always going to be like such a nerve right yeah. now. Like I need, I need a real pro to do this, like to do this yeah, part. That's why I have a, <laughs> that's why I have a live guitarist. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's always, it, yeah, it's also different too. Like um, when you're writing and recording versus performing, like, you know, mm. like when you're performing, you have like, you feel like you're like a fish in a, you know, in a fishbowl or something. Everyone's mm. like watching you. And then, you know, oh, yeah. It's, it's it's definitely a different sensation um yeah. a very nerve-wracking one for sure all right and then um so below the terror part one and just yeah reading it it seems like the story it has like a matrix vibe in terms of like you're going below the surface of the earth or something like mm -hmm. that right or you're like trying to get to the center because yeah I, I'm assuming because it's post-apocalyptic, you know, the planet was already super screwed mm -hmm. up at that time. You're trying to get to the yeah. center of the earth to get warmth, right? That's exactly or something, yeah. Or something like that that's yeah. sort of had so what like what inspired all that? Uh I don't know. Um, I, I guess just just the thought of trying to trying to figure out just on my own. Like, I mean, there's obvious, obvious um um, like you said, the Matrix. You know, they go. They, you know, they have they're hidden way under under the ground, and then like journey to the center of the Earth, and 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 just. But in my mind, is like if the 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 surface of the Earth is this, it's it's an icy wasteland. Like the humanity and the machines have destroyed the Earth so much that it's just a cold, basically ice age on on the surface. There's no there's no way that humanity can survive. So the only way to um, get away from that is go underground. Um, and underground there's still running water and and you know getting away from the ice age on the surface is going to get warmer the closer closer you get below the earth's crust which is pretty damn thick anyway um but i kind of like figured that that's that can be the idea that's where that's where they're going to be hiding away and 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 i guess um the, the main track to the core is is that idea of like it's, it's humanity they're digging down they're going they're going deeper and deeper um and and i've got some already kind of concept ideas for part two and part three of like the further part of the journey so rather than just you know it's just more tales of more tales of um you know oppression on the surface it's actually more kind of humanity's you know 
um, dealing with dealing with the um, uh, dealing with the relationship with with the with the earth and and finding the the core and finding where it's mm -hmm. hot and you know being able to grow things even you know if they've got water and heat is is things going to grow what what grows I mean, do you need oxygen do you need you know light to actually grow things can they get light you know so anyway it's, it's kind of got some ideas i don't i think it, yeah, sure i yet. think it's really cool i don't know if you ever watch ancient aliens do you ever watch ancient aliens like you know that show <laughs> no, no i haven't they're always i mean i just i just love ancient aliens because i'm such a nerd for that but like they always cool. talk about how there might be a species of aliens living underground in our planet yeah, yeah. As we speak and, and i'm like that's kind of possible if you think about yeah. it you know we don't really know what's going on underneath like you know. oh totally is it is it, is it like, the just the descent is that is like the horror movie the descent where they go underground oh, and they find it's I don't like know that movie yeah. but maybe <laughs> you know and it's <laughs> yeah. like a, and then and, and there's an episode of ancient aliens where they actually um talked about like all of these like subterranean tunnels that mm. um that they dis discovered like you know connecting like you know different parts of the world together and then um and then like why are they there like you know who's living in there but anyway like a lot of what you're talking about kind of reminds me of that you know mm -hmm. so maybe at one point they get closer to the center of the earth but then they run into like an army of aliens or something <laughs> oh <laughs> 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 well, speaking of to the core, you since you mentioned to the core, um, let's take a look at your visuals for that one.
All right. Down to the core. That's like such a goth club banger. <laughs> it's always like it's it. now. Go ahead. Oh, it's it's done quite well on uh, on um on Twitch and people have picked it up and I've been quite happy with the kind of how well it's been received. It it's certainly kind of it's one of those stompy club tracks, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like it it's such a it's such an important um an important genre to hit. Like, you know, because I mean I like I always get that challenge of like okay you need to come up with like you know a, like a goth club hit you know but it does take <laughs> a certain type of sensibility to be able to produce something so heavy hitting like mm -hmm. that and also at the same time it's it's danceable heavy hitting and mechanical at the same time and it has like you know that nice dark vibe um but yeah like i to the core is it's such a it's such a great track and mm -hmm. um and I'm, and I'm glad it did well. <laughs> it's doing well yeah. for you. I know. <laughs> You're like, <"Hey." laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, we have a couple more videos that um that we got lined up. And one is superficial and triolith. Um, mm -hmm. So tell me. Okay, let's start with superficial. So tell me about this video. Um superficial was the first um the lead single from terra 3808 mm -hmm. um it's kind of the first video that i really dabbled into kind of diy music videos i suppose um just kind of like smashing of lots of sampled videos together and a little bit of my face into it as well and you can probably see through the theme of what my videos are apart from trying mm -hmm. it is, is a live video they, they kind of have a similar look to them i've tried to use the same font and that kind of thing just just to kind of establish if you're going to see a music video from me it's going to be something like this it's not going to be too dissimilar to what you've seen before um superficial was uh i guess it was kind of although the concept of 38 hadn't really when i started writing it the idea of it hadn't really kind of evolved yet um but mm -hmm. it was the idea of like humanity just lives in in uh with just blinkered world you know and everyone just walks down the street um completely unaware of everything else that's going on and i wanted to kind of like that's the idea of having the virtual reality which on the side point is really really great and i love it but um the idea of they they everyone just living in a different world um, or living in their own world um and and it was kind of i guess it's it was it was my favorite track from um from what i'd been writing of the record um and it 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 just kind of hits harder it's got a very kind of heavy middle era ministry kind of feel to it i guess mm -hmm. um so it's it's certainly i mean it's got the electronic elements to it but it's certainly kind of hard hitting industrial metal um yeah edged so yeah i like how um you're and and this is quite um, common, actually. Not, not not that it's common, but I think what I love about the darker genres is that a lot of a lot of the artists, a lot of the songwriters, they do touch upon certain realities, you know. And then there is like that generated awareness, and you know they don't they're not afraid to tackle it you know and kind of just you know bring it into their art and discuss and mm -hmm. you know something and then you know I, I, I definitely see that same theme too in your music which i really appreciate because mm -hmm. like you know everyone knows everyone knows in, in my community that like you know i'm all about you know this music has to say something has to stand mm -hmm. for something yeah um, yeah, yeah. And, but what's really really impressive about industrial music you know even even we take, you know, Nine Inch Nails, trance music, you know, he he says a lot, you know, he says a mm -hmm. lot. And and that's what I really appreciate about the dark electro industrial community is that, yeah, we're not afraid to kind of just get in there and just mm -hmm. bring certain topics to the table mm -hmm. and then do it in a way that's actually catchy <laughs> and visible yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, and then sure. um, it says something. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the songs, a lot of the um, 
love the music that we hear even like you know when we do the communion after dark um, festivals and you know we see our peers in the, in the community they they are each of them each one of them saying something mm-hmm. you know which i think mm-hmm. i think is really important because i don't we don't see that a lot um i i definitely don't see that a lot in pop music um mm-hmm. for sure like you know and i definitely don't see that in a lot of other electronic genres and mm-hmm. i think it's just why i think this is so special um you know especially with what's happening right now you know it's like you know we're we're making music that a, that a lot of times it's kind of mirroring directly what's happening like you know as mm-hmm. we speak mm-hmm. um it does take a certain level of bravery to to do that for sure um mm-hmm. so with that so let's take a look at superficial <laughs> let's do it so i think it's really relevant yeah it's really relevant especially with this generation <laughs> mm-hmm. um oh definitely head in the phone yeah. walking down the street you know that's kind for of the sure. idea for sure Yes. 
All right. That was superficial. Love the guitars on that one. And your vocals were just so <laughs> like was that like so guttural, you know? Yeah, like, just gritty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Did it hurt <laughs> doing that? <laughs> kind of get kind of get used to it, I guess. Yeah. Do it from the right place. <laughs> Did you play with a band before? Like um in a metal band at one point? Uh or... yes. I I played with um just a like a local band, um, which is a metal band. I played bass in that band. Um uh for a couple of years i guess um and then uh i ended up playing with a band called concrete lung um mm -hmm. an industrial industrial metal band um uh and that was a lot of fun that gave me a lot of experience in in the scene in the genre in the music uh, being on stage i've been on stage all my life but um actually doing it in something that i really really enjoy <laughs> um, yeah i mean we that we can tell just watching your your twitch live stream it, you're so natural on stage and <laughs> you know it, it's it's really fun to watch you know when um when i saw the christmas like the christmas um show that you did and i thought it was really cool it was really <laughs> fun and then i i will never forget when somebody asked for for um somebody requested david hassel <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I was like, he's still making music, I guess. Yeah, David Hasselhoff. Yeah, <laughs> but you, yeah. but we, but you didn't play it because I guess you didn't have, you didn't no, have I didn't David have Hasselhoff. It. No, <laughs> that was really fun. And I'm sorry, um, actually, let's backtrack a little bit. Um, sure. so you're based in the UK. Where in the UK are you? Uh, I'm based in London, southeast London, um, oh, kind of near London. Greenwich, um um yeah i've been here nearly 20 years i suppose i grew up just outside um outside london north north side of london um but i kind of moved here with work and been here ever since oh cool yeah that's awesome and london has like a like the scene in london it seems like it's pretty it's alive and it's like very mm -hmm. active and yeah yeah we're very lucky to get a lot of bands coming through here um there's a lot of clubs that happen um mm -hmm. obviously with covid you know that that really kind of shut down a lot of things and it's kind of i think things are beginning to kind of pop up again but yeah slowly, slowly. Uh, and hopefully hopefully it will pick up um i mean we've got we've got slime light club here which is um used to be a weekly um goth industrial club uh, and i think it's gone to monthly now um but it's like mm -hmm. the world's longest running goth club um it's been going for nearly 35 years are you planning on do um on touring um for your new record or? um i don't think um i'm yet at that point where touring is something that's viable for me um but in the uk certainly kind of doing as many shows in london as i can um mm -hmm. i also have um well i've got one show coming up on the 9th of april um in london it happens to be at Electroworks, which is the venue where Slimelight is, so that's there. Um, and then the week after, week after that, I'm playing Resistance Festival up in Sheffield, so like north north mm. of England. Mm -hmm. um, so really, really excited about playing that. I'm opening up the Friday night, so the opening night. Um, oh, cool! Um, yeah, um, and I was actually so this this festival was meant to run uh, 2020, um, but obviously uh, pandemic kicked in um and i was meant to dj it so not with my band just literally dj it um and when when it came around to this time like with some artists having other plans or not being able to make it over or whatever um the promoter said do i want to play you know obviously seeing that i've been pushing my own music as well over the last couple of years still um so i was like hell yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm all over that i'm gonna so i'm opening up the show which is pretty cool um, yeah, so going really from cool. djing djing on the friday night i'm actually opening up uh, the night with my band so Really oh, that's cool. That. So you have a you're playing with a full band? No, nope. I have a, a guitarist, a live guitarist, uh, and me, um, and that's it. So we play to a backing track with the synths and the drums on it. Um, but we're both like he's got a background, a theater, a theater background, and I, I mm -hmm. I've been a, a music performer for years. So we have we have quite a good stage presence, even though it's just two of us. Um, 
I think it worked. I mean, it always like I always I always ask like you know like how's your life like set up because I feel like everyone everyone does it different, but everyone mm -hmm. kind of has a way of doing it that's impactful and unique to themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, and it's it's so much easier for sure <laughs> with like less people. Oh, yeah, um, yeah <laughs> that's it's a huge more... benefit. <laughs> yeah, you have you, feel you have more control, I think, and then. Um, mm -hmm less things like you know go going ori on stage oh yeah yeah definitely, <laughs> yeah, less, definitely. Like, less technical issues and yeah um, and dramas yeah. like yeah, what, do, always... what do you need the drama <laughs> <laughs> i mean i love i love drama i mean everyone knows that i i i'm very i'm very partial and i have a very soft spot um when it comes to the rhythm section like you know mm -hmm. that's just i just love a good tight solid rhythm section especially yeah, okay. live mm -hmm. but I don't like I don't like recording with them. I don't like writing with them. Like I write all my drum parts and I you know okay. do all my drum production. Um, yeah, and then they'll complain to me when it comes to perform live. They'll be like, you know, this sounds like you know there are like two drummers in this track, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. well, then go grow another arm or something. <laughs> Make it work. Make it work. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear any complaints. Like that's yeah, how yeah. I wrote it. Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah. you no, know, but you know, but this is you no, know, this is great. And I'm and I'm glad to hear that, yeah, you're you're out, you're gonna go mm -hmm. perform, open the night, yeah. and it's a big night because yeah. Friday night, you know, we know yeah, how important it's, it's that big, is. It's a big festival in the UK too. It's a big festival, so, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's really, really cool. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna start seeing more of that too. Like, you know, now that things are opening up and mm -hmm. you know, things are good. So hopefully things are slowing getting back to normal, you know. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. fingers yeah. crossed, you know. Yeah, right. Well, so we're going to close off with Triolith. But Trial. before we do that, oh, Triolith. Okay, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it could be either way, to be fair. I think, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, is it a tomato, tomato type of thing? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Like, I mean, absolutely. Like, trio. T-R-I-O is, is trio. I guess I, I. We would probably I, call it Triolith in the United States, and you guys would mm. call it Triolith in. Yeah. What would you call yeah. what do you call that prehistoric um creature that you know you see lots of fossils of? Would you call it trilobite? Or is that is that with a Y anyway? That, is, that has a Y. Yeah, that's okay. I think that is a that has a Y. So it would be called trilobite. Damn, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always get into this. Um yeah, because my husband's British and so he, he was born and raised in london and he cool. and i always always get into like you know pronunciation oh yeah, yeah yeah like you yeah, know yeah, my, my favorite was yeah. was um oregano versus oregano oh. <laughs> so, 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 so oregano oh yeah yeah totally my, um... and then he's like Ore oregano and i'm like oregano oh, it's oregano <laughs> definitely <laughs> um my my wife my wife's canadian so we have the same conversation <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's yeah. interesting like you know i mean yeah. we all speak the same language but yeah, yeah. The regions definitely have their own ways of pronunciating <laughs> things yeah definitely mirror so, mirror is mirror is a good one because i i say mirror it's like two words two syllables mirror mirror but, mirror. but you'd probably say it mirror Mirror. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I, I, take, I think most I take Americans out of it saying it's a mirror. <laughs> most, most American, ah, I say mirror. Uh, yeah, it's a sh very short second um syllable. Yeah, like it's, it's almost sounds like mirror. Yeah, mirror. It's mirror. And then, uh, well, like, um, yeah, there's there's a lot, there's a lot of words. Oh, yeah, aluminium versus aluminum. <laughs> Mm -hmm. aluminium. <laughs> that's another oh, yeah. aluminium and yeah that is another one that always gets um that's up there in terms of pronunciation <laughs> wars all right so well since this is your song we're gonna okay. call it trialith trialith <laughs> trialith trialith and then well, I, um, I do pronounce it like that in the song too so <laughs> yeah all right here we go this is trialith
All right. So, well, that was that was really, really, really intense, and must it must feel so cathartic, like you know, playing live, you know, and just having that release, you know, mm -hmm. through the music and all that intensity. Um, and I love the fashion, the fashion that you guys bring. I mean, it's, <laughs> in, especially in this community, is really, really, it's always, it's always so cool. It's so badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta make the effort, right? You gotta make it look good, look good on stage, yeah, and it's part you know, of the put, whole put out thing. the whole thing exactly. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Like it's part of the presentation. It's part of the package, you know? mm -hmm. and it works so well with the sound and the music. You know, the aesthetic is so strong. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. There we have it. Um, do you have any final words to our audience? In terms of, like you know, your like any any wisdom you want to impart. <laughs> oh, I don't know about wisdom, but certainly yeah. um, my new record comes out if it hasn't come out already very very soon or was very very <laughs> soon ago. Um, yeah, depending 50... on when we air this, <laughs> whether we air it before or after. Yeah, yeah, fifteenth yeah, of March. So. Um, so it's this coming Tuesday for us right now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, go check it out at mattheart.bandcamp.com. Um, I'm really, really excited about um, releasing this whole record. Um, and there is lots more to come this year. Um, I've already got a couple of remixes in, in the works um, and certainly a part two to the record coming up. Um, go with next year probably now. Um, but uh, it's certainly, I, I keep, keep putting out the music and um, keep buying it, keep enjoying it. Um, and uh, I love doing it, honestly. I love doing it and and seeing people just say, oh, I love that track or I love that video. It's just, you know, it kind of it makes my day. You know, that's what it's about. And I think um, I think that's what music is about for musicians that write it. Um, it's all about kind of just if, if you're doing something that someone else enjoys, it's it's worth it. And you know, I go back mm -hmm. for, to what we said at the beginning with the with the with the Twitch, the stream, um, Matt Hart thirty eight oh eight. Um, it just I, I do it to entertain, and I do it to entertain people. And if if they get some kind of enjoyment out of it, um, then then it's all been worth it. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, uh, part part of what I do with that is is supporting supporting the other artists as well as a, as a DJ and supporting the other artists and playing them like yourself obviously um and uh, this and, is you know, this is kind of like my yeah the counterpart the twitch counterpart <laughs> the <laughs> platform to support yeah. other artists yeah exactly yeah. definitely you need to keep that karma going you know that whole mm -hmm. that whole oh, cycle yeah, yeah. of awesomeness you know, yeah yeah and like what the amount of the you know djs out there that put put the tracks up on the screen and that kind of thing that wouldn't have been heard of like you go to a club what you have to go and ask the dj what the name of the track is but it, it's being being pushed into your face like this is what the track is if you like it go and buy it go and stream it on spotify or whatever um but a D djs in clubs like don't have that kind of unless they have a little you know running like digital thing saying right. this is this track playing but obviously they don't um, yeah they don't and that's what's great about <laughs> twitch community actually twitch twitch dj community is awesome it's huge and mm -hmm. it's what's amazing is that um actually people don't talk about this too often but um you got each one of you guys have your own fan base Mm -hmm. And you guys have, like, yeah, you guys have a strong fan base running. And it's such a huge honor whenever you guys play, like, you know, our music, you know, the other artists' music, because it's like, it's it's another promotion. And it's, mm -hmm. and it, there's a lot, you know, it's something that, that we can't metricize, you know, because, you know, people, especially a lot of artists are very concerned over their metrics, but then, the whole Twitch community always always gets overlooked, but I feel like they're also the most instrumental mm -hmm. in terms of getting new, breaking new artists out, mm -hmm. you know, into mm -hmm. several communities, to several scenes, and getting their music heard, you know. And mm -hmm. I think that's what's so revolutionary about Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, so it certainly helped helped me myself, like pushing out my own music. I do mm -hmm. it obviously in my own stream, but then 
um we get djs come into my stream and they hear it or like a, a dj with dj blah 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 and then so we then send it out to them as well they go add it to the dj promo pool and it's like yeah go and play it it's and such and a nice network often, yeah, yeah oh totally quite often you know you'll get that band camp notification at three o'clock in the morning it was like mm, who of my dj friends was djing at that time of day that they would have played <laughs> something that i that that's mine that would have then sent someone else to it you know it, yeah i'm sure it happens out there so it, it's pretty no, awesome it, it is pretty really awesome. really cool yeah it's great well, well thank you so much matt for mm -hmm. coming tonight and sharing us all your insight about your new records which i'm really really excited about and <laughs> Man, I know it, it's it's cool, and then you're a very very cool dude. You're a very cool figure <laughs> in our scene, and you know, and I'm just so I'm so stoked for you, and you know, I, you're yeah, and your your Twitch shows. Everyone check out Matt's Twitch <laughs> Twitch shows and subscribe to his channel because it's really really cool. Thank you very much, Zarina, for having me on your <laughs> show. It's been awesome, um, and very 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 happy that we we ended up chatting and talking and 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 being able to do this you know keep writing the wonderful music that you write no oh, thank you <laughs> and thank you for supporting me oh my god <laughs> i feel like a lot of people got to know me because of you like you know you playing my music out there i think it's a, no thank you and i really really appreciate that well there you go guys um again make sure to check out matt's bank camp and his twitch and pick up that record Oh,